guys so today's video is going to be my halfway through the year countdown of all the palettes that I tried in 2021. I tried a total of 12 eyeshadow palettes this year. That's a little much but at the same time I was decluttering quite a bit in my collection. Sorry my face looks a little bit orangey. Um, I am wearing the Soul Body Foundation from um, color uh from ColourPop Soul Body line and I really like it but it can look a little bit darker on my skin but it's a really nice foundation so sorry if it looks a little bit yellow here but I think that's just the lighting so anyway I tried a total of 12 palettes this past uh six months um I have been selling quite a bit of palettes on Poshmark so I kind of like cleared some space in my collection so I could try new palettes and not keep old palettes that I like literally just like was not using it was just sitting in my collection so I just decided to get rid of some palettes and buy palettes that I really wanted I know that you know that's not really a declutter because I'm just replacing it with new palettes but if it makes me feel better to get rid of older palettes that are just sitting in my collection and then put it towards getting new palettes that I really want to try and have in my collection then I don't see who it's hurting it's my money and I'm going to spend it on what I want so since we got that out of the way, let's start counting down the palettes. So number 12 is the ColourPop Disney Bambi Pressed Powder Palette. Now with this palette, I have absolutely nothing to say about the quality of it, about the packaging, how cute it is, everything. It's a really nice everyday palette, really, really simple. I mean, first of all, the packaging's freaking adorable. And then when you open it up, it has the same little design on it. So freaking cute. And then it has a plastic insert. And then this is what the five pan palette looks like. Now, I usually don't go for five pan palettes. I don't end up ever really using them. I don't really go for small palettes. Anything that doesn't have more than like eight shadows in it, I really don't use it too much at all. Um, but I really wanted this because, uh, you guys know I love Disney and I just thought that this collection was so freaking cute and I wasn't originally going to get one of the eyeshadow palettes in the collection and the reason why I'm ranking this palette so low is because this is literally the worst value that you get from ColourPop for how much these costed. They costed $14 a piece for five eyeshadows, like... I am going to be talking about the Disney Lizzie McGuire palette in this um, video, but that one comes with 12 shades and it's like $22. These were listed at $14 a piece for five eyeshadows. And yes, the quality is really good with these, but do you see how dirty the palette is? This actually has a lot of kickback. And I usually don't care about that because like as long as it performs on my eye and I don't get any fallout on my eyes, I'm good. But the fact that this is um, $14 and it gets so much kick up every time I use it, again, it doesn't really bother me because the mattes perform really nice, very buttery. This gold shade is stunning. Um, and you can get a complete look out of this, but honestly, if this wasn't Bambi, and the reason, the only reason why I got this was because it was a Bambi palette because the collection was really, really cute. I'm a Disney collector. I collect a lot of the stuff from ColourPop when they come out with the Disney collections. And I just thought it was so cute. But I would never recommend this for someone that wants to start out with ColourPop. I'm, I'd be like, get one of the nine pans because they're literally the same price, sometimes cheaper than these smaller five pan palettes. I don't know why they're going in this direction. I mean, again, very, very cute, but why didn't they charge like nine or $10? And I still think that's too pricey. These shouldn't have been any more than like eight or $9. And I understand since it's a Disney palette, they have to charge a little bit more money for the packaging, for Disney, all that stuff. I get that, but these were so overpriced. And then with tax, this was like almost $16. You're not getting a bang for your buck with these. I would stay away from them. I would try one of the um, nine pans over this. The only reason why I bought it is because I love Disney stuff from ColourPop. Again, originally I wasn't going to get this. 
but the packaging was so freaking adorable and I love that Bambi's on it and I just really wanted it because of that but I would not recommend this palette whatsoever that's why it's on the very bottom so that one is number 12 okay the number 11 I was really really excited for this palette I was really excited that Urban Decay was coming out with a new Naked palette and I thought the color scheme was really pretty. So this is the Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette. Now, I wanted to get this because I really liked the color scheme. I had just, I'm not decluttering my Naked 3 or Naked 2, but I did declutter, declutter the Naked 2 and the Naked 3 is kind of getting, getting too old at this point that I kind of wanted to get an updated naked palette with colors that I was really gonna use. And even though like naked palettes are kind of pricey, some people like kind of hate the trend that they're still trying to push the naked palettes on us because some, some people are like, you know, why can't Urban Decay just drop the naked palettes at this point? But you know, the reason why they keep on um, pushing the naked palettes is because these sell like if you ask someone like what palette they want to get from sephora or ulta it's going to be an urban decay naked palette so this is what it looks like it's so pretty on the outside and then this is the palette really really pretty i really liked the color scheme in here i kept on seeing the comparisons to the um dream street palette from ColourPop though and honestly the reason why i also, the reason why I got this is because my Dream Street palette is getting pretty old at this point, too. That I loved the color scheme in that palette so much that I kind of wanted an updated version. But honestly, this is good. But the Dream Street quality of the ColourPop palette, I mean, the quality of the Dream Street palette from ColourPop is better than this palette. I don't think that this formula is as good as their honey palette the honey palette was like pure perfection that is still my favorite naked palette but I saw like Andrea Mitigliano and Laura Loves Makeup like totally hype up this palette and they were like I'm not sure if this is my favorite palette or the honey so I was really really excited to try it I don't know if it's just because that um I'm really really into indie brands or just color pops formula now that the urban decay formula doesn't really impress me as much anymore so this is what it looks like so it has four metallics and then the rest of the shades are mattes the metallics in here are actually beautiful and there's nothing wrong with this formula it's a good formula but for fifty dollars i really don't think it's worth the price and I do think that a lot of these mattes are pretty dry and kind of hard to blend. Um, not like terrible. They still perform like a standard Urban Decay formula. But I just think compared to the Honey Palette, it's just not as good as that one. It's pretty. But at the same time, I'm not going to swatch all these palettes, by the way. Um, I like this palette. But if this wasn't a Naked Palette, I probably would have skipped over it. But... Again, since I can't really use the Naked 3 palette anymore and I wanted like an updated version of the Dream Street color scheme, that's why I got it. I would never declutter the Dream Street. I just don't really use it as much anymore because it doesn't really perform the same. And it's pretty. And I actually really like the colors and everything. And I thought it was really on trend. And I thought that they did a great job with the color story. And I think that this is like a, a fun twist on the Naked palettes. I know some people like really hate it on this. And I originally was not going to get this either. But I looked at it and I liked the color scheme. And it is a practical palette for me to have. But honestly, if it wasn't a Naked palette, I wouldn't have gotten it. And I don't know if it's going to stay in my collection, to be honest. But... The collector in me of the Naked Palettes just wants it because of that, but I don't know. It might not be in my collection next year, but we'll see. Um, so that is number 11. Okay, the number 10 is the Bobbi Brown High Bar Palette. Now, this one I was not originally planning on getting, um, but I found this at... Um, Nordstrom Rack for 30 bucks as opposed to $60 and I was kind of wanting to try the Bobbi Brown formula for a while because I was very curious about it and I just thought this color scheme was so pretty. 
I just think that this is a great color scheme for an everyday palette. And honestly, all the rest of the palettes that I'm going to be talking about, the quality is amazing in all of them. Like honestly, compared to the palettes I bought last year, the all these palettes are like solid. Like there's not one palette that I have here that I'm disappointed with the formula. Like maybe the only one is the Wild West, but it's still a good formula. It's still Urban Decay, so you know it's going to perform well. But honestly, all of them are pretty damn good. So I really loved this color scheme. And when I saw it at Nordstrom Rack, and this was the last one, I was like, oh my god, this is actually really pretty. And I brought it home and tried it out. And I actually really, really like it. Some of these sparkly shades are so pretty. Like, I think that this is such a great, like, day to night palette. Like, you could put, like a couple of these neutrals in the crease and then put one of these on and then just pop on one of these like super shimmery um like shades sparkly shades on the lid for nighttime and you're good to go um I just think that this is really nice the mattes are beautiful they blend out beautifully um and the shimmers are stunning on the lid so I really like this palette I honestly have no complaints about it I think it's great I just really want to whip it out and use it more again. Again, I didn't feel as obligated using this too much because I didn't pay full price for it, but I really like it, and I'm glad that I tried it. I actually like this formula more than the um, Urban Decay palette. That's why I ranked it a little bit higher. Um, yeah, let me have it fall out of the other side now onto the floor, Caitlin. But yeah, I thought it was really pretty. I really liked the color scheme in this palette. And I like that the um, palette's on the back of it to see what colors are in here. But yeah, I really like this palette. So that one is number 10. And I haven't had a Bobbi Brown palette in my collection like ever pretty much. I used to use the single shadows a, a while back. But those are so damn overpriced that I think that you get a better bang for your buck just getting the palettes. Because like their single shadows are like $25 when... This is $60 full price. I still think that's a better deal than getting the single shadows, but that's just me. So yeah, really like this palette. It's really pretty, really nice quality. Okay, number nine is the Gourmand Girls Exquisite Palette, and this one is in collaboration with Batgirl Lectica. And this palette actually was not um, bought by myself. It was sent to me from Debbie. The only reason why I'm including this and I didn't include like the Pat McGrath and the Alamar last year, those ones were actual gifts to me. Like I was gifted both of those from Riri and from um, Debbie. So I did not rank those ones. They're both amazing though. This one I got because I joined um, Debbie's channel and became a member. And you get like a, a point perk gift if you um, become a member of her channel. So she was sending out Gourmand Girls um, palettes to anyone who became a member of her channel in the first month. Now you're actually not getting the palettes anymore. You're just getting your name um, put twice on the wheel for her giveaways. But she sent me the exquisite palette from Gourmand Girls. And honestly, it was kind of crazy how good the timing was when I got this palette, because I got this palette literally the day that um, my best friend passed away. I, I just hate saying it, but yeah. So um, this is what it looks like. And it was weird that I got it that day because it kind of like helped me a little bit more. I was like, wow, I don't know. It just, it meant a lot to me to get it that day. So this is what the palette looks like. It's so pretty. I love you ha how you have like this dark and vampy half like really fun pops of color and then you have like this neutral side and <coughs> excuse me Debbie was like Caitlin's gonna love this palette she was like I know that it's like kind of like a Caitlin palette and she said that she thought that this palette was perfect for me and I was like it was just really sweet of her and I know like it wasn't just a gift, but at the same time, like, I just think it's really, really nice. Um, so I'm really not going to swatch any of the palettes until I get to the top five because those are like the creme de la creme. But this palette's really, really good. I really like it so far. It's very different for me. I've tried out all the shades 
and the lid shades are beautiful super buttery and the mattes blend really nice i would definitely give this brand a chance you are missing out if you don't i really think that these like self-made independent brands are such amazing quality so i think that this is a solid formula beautiful blends out really nicely so this one is number nine i probably would have ranked it higher if i would have used it longer but I got a feel for it, and the palettes that I ranked a little bit higher, <clears throat> I freaking love. So yeah, that one is number nine. Sorry, I just had to grab myself something to drink. So number eight, this one I'm ranking a bit lower because there's absolutely nothing wrong with the quality. It's more so the color story. I would have changed like maybe like one or two shades in here, but the quality is so damn good. So number eight is the Hip Dot Clueless palette. Now, this is like one of the only new brands to me on this list because mostly all the palettes that I rank a little bit higher are all formulas I'm familiar with except for one of them. So this is the Clueless palette from Hip Dot. Again, the packaging is so freaking cute. I love how soft it is. I love how it's just like her notebook in the movie or backpack. I always forget if, if it's her no her notebook or her backpack, but I always forget that the notebook is from Legally Blonde, not from Clueless. It's her furry backpack, and I just think it's adorable. So this is what the palette looks like. Now, I think that the colors in here are gorgeous. I think the mattes are stunning. The shimmers are beautiful. Oh my god, they all blend amazing. Hip Dot's formula is so easy to use. They just make eyeshadows easy. And I've been wanting to try their formula for a while. And then when I saw this collection come out, I was like, oh my god. I was like, Clueless, I need that in my life. You guys do not understand how much I used to watch Clueless. But I'm sure like every girl who grew up with Clueless watched it as much as I did because I freaking loved it. I mean, it's a freaking classic. There's literally a shade in here called Classic. I mean, it's a classic movie though. And they came out with this collection with Hip Dot to celebrate the 50th anniversary of 50th. You're not that old, Caitlin. The 25th anniversary, not the 50th. Um, but the thing is that, like, the shimmers are gorgeous. I just wish that they had put maybe one more matte in here. I know, like, I probably have every matte I could poss possibly need to make this palette work for me. But... Usually for me, I'm pretty much a straight up palette girl. And when the palette does not have like those certain shades in there that I need to complete a, a full look, sometimes like if you decide to use like a different brand, sometimes it always like doesn't really, sometimes it doesn't always mesh well with the formula of the um, palette unless it's like the same brand, you know what I mean? Like... But that's why I use my ColourPop palettes to deep, I mean ColourPop singles to deepen up any look because the ColourPop formula pretty much works with every single formula that I use it with. So that's why I always use those. Um, but I don't want to always like reach for my singles every single time. I mean, again, the mattes in here are really pretty. I just kind of wish that they had maybe made the classic shade like maybe like another matte shade in here. And then I probably would have made, like, pretty groovy, maybe, like, a matte blue shade, like a matte turquoise, and then I think it would have been perfect. But I kind of understand what they were going for with this palette is they were kind of going with the eyeshadow style of the movie and not so much going with, like, what the colors were. Um... Not that the colors aren't perfect for what the, um eyeshadows are called and I love the eyeshadow names in here they're so fucking funny so um we have like classic Botticelli full-on Monet and this formula is so nice I'm so glad um that I like the formula of hip dot shadows like I think that they're great I also watched quite a few reviews on hip dot before this and everybody was saying the same thing as that hip dot makes great eyeshadows and I was like I'm definitely not disappointed with that I am going to swatch some of these, though, because they're just too pretty. Um, 
But yeah, that's the only thing is that. But they know how to do eyeshadow. They're so freaking pretty. I mean, look at that red. That red is ridiculous. It is so hard to do a good matte red like that. And that is so good. So that one is Flamme Monet. This one is pretty groovy. And then this one is classic. And the, the shimmers are so beautiful and metallic on. Let me not like dig my thumb into the palette. Which I kind of just did. But it's fine. Um, so yeah. Really nice palette. Definitely nothing negative to say. Except for um, that I wish that some of the shades were matte instead of shimmer. Like I probably would have done six shimmers in here. And maybe like six mattes or maybe five mattes and seven shimmers I thought that would have been a little bit better but it's so pretty and I really want to whip this palette out and use it again soon so um yeah so that one is number eight and I decided to get the whole collection it was like a face palette um a lip oil set and then um this palette and I was like I definitely need the whole thing so that one's number eight Okay, so number seven, which I know a lot of people hated on this palette. And again, pretty much all of these palettes that I'm counting down are brands that I've tried before. So number seven, this is a very controversial palette, is the Mary Jane palette from Melt Cosmetics. I actually just whipped this out and used it yesterday because... Despite me getting like less eyeshadow palettes at this point um, than I did last year, I haven't tried all the shades on my lid twice. And that's usually like what I like to do before I move on to like another palette um, because I've just been getting so many palettes lately. Um, but I got this palette because I really wanted a Mary Jane themed palette in my collection. So because, you know, I'm about that life. It's legal in New York now, so I was like, I just thought that this was perfect. I know that they came out with the Smoke Sessions palette before this and the 420, and neither of those color stories really appealed to me as much as this one. And I wasn't going to get this one because I was like, there's not enough mattes in here for me, and the sh there's too many shimmers. But once I've actually used all of these shimmers... And with the coinciding mattes in here, the mattes work so well with the shimmers that are in here. And even though you would think that they would be a little bit boring because there's only four mattes, they work so well with every single shade in here. And I think that these lid shades are stunning. I love the sparkle in these. I think that they really just make your lid sparkle so beautifully. I know a lot of people were mad because... They felt that some of the shimmers were just too crumbly. They had no problem with their mattes because melt mattes are amazing. But they feel like just the formula is very inconsistent with melt. And it can be. But I really love this palette. I think it's beautiful. Um, and I ended up using it a ton even though it's not really like a spring palette. They always release a Mary Jane themed palette every 420. So, And I just thought that. I'm glad that I waited because this was definitely the one that appealed to me most with the color story. But yeah, as long as you wet some of the eyeshadows that are very PC, they apply on the lid beautifully. Um, but I just use them dry and I still think they're really beautiful. The only time I have a problem with them is putting them on the inner corners because some of them are super sparkly and they kind of can, you know, fall, cause a little bit of fallout if you don't like spray it. Um, but again, if you just spray it, you'll be fine. So I'm just going to swatch a couple of these too because they're just so... Look at this shade bow. Look how pigmented that is. I mean, they're like super metallic. So I really liked this palette. I think it's so pretty. And then this one is Sweet Lucy. And then this one is Rubia. I kind of like that dirty looking kind of look sometimes too. And I really like it. It's super grungy. This one is Bo. This one is Santa Maria. And then this one, no, Sweet Lucy and then Rubia. Really pigmented. Look how shiny those are. I know they look a little crumbly, but honestly, 
on the lid they're so pretty and they really shine beautifully so i really liked this palette i know i'm usually different from the pack but i really liked it okay so number six and then we're getting into the top five this one just missed the cuff the cuff the cut it was on the cusp of being higher but I know my reasons why I ranked this lower. So number six is the ColourPop and Disney Liz Me. ColourPop and Liz Me. ColourPop and Disney Lizzie McGuire palettes. Now, first off, this is probably my favorite packaging out of all of the palettes. I mean, they nailed this packaging. Also, I knew I was going to get this palette 100,000%. It did not matter what shades were in the palette. I loved Lizzie McGuire. I mean, I loved Clueless too. I knew I was going to get that palette too. But the fact that ColourPop got me not once, not twice, but four times this year, um, when last year I'd only bought three ColourPop palettes and I've already bought four this past year, I mean... Since they came out with a Lizzie McGuire palette, I was like, I need it in my life. And this was actually the first ColourPop collection that I bought the full collection. But I didn't keep everything. I mean, there really wasn't too much that was in the collection. It was the eyeshadow palette, the two blushes, the two glitters, and the two lip gloss sets. I gave one of the lip gloss sets and both of the glitters to one of my friends. And I just kept the palette, the two blushes, and one of the lip gloss sets. So it wasn't really that crazy. So anyway, look at the packaging on the outside, freaking adorable, and then it, the inside mirror is so freaking cute. So this is the Lizzie McGuire palette, and the color story is, I think, absolute perfection for Lizzie McGuire. I really do. I know some people like wanted like a blue or like a, that other stuff, but I think that this is perfect for like that, you know, preteen vibe. Um, and I think that this would be a palette that, you know, high schoolers can use. I think it has, like, that vibe to it, and I really love that. Their Disney color schemes, like I've said a million times, are so amazing. I think they nailed the Disney color schemes, but I really think they did a great job with this. The only thing, one, there is one dud shade in here, and that is Don't Freak. I don't think that this is a very good green the rest of the shades are fantastic the mattes blend beautifully the metallics in here are gorgeous um i have nothing negative to say about the formula at all i mean the color pop formula really works well for me i would just say i would have wished that there was another deepening shade in this palette but at the same because like it's kind of difficult to create looks with this sometimes but I really loved this for the springtime because it was such a perfect spring palette because I felt like this was kind of the spring palette that I needed because it has like the, the pretty pinks, it has the pretty purples, and you can do like a purple look with these and then a pink look with these and then like an orange look with these and you have this color too to do an orange look with. Like very simple like three or four shadow looks which is like absolutely perfect for the springtime sometimes I go a little bit more dramatic for the summertime and springtime I kind of do a little bit lighter makeup for my eyes and I just thought this was perfect also this shade bye bye in here so freaking metallic it's amazing like so good and then let's just do two other colors hmm. I'll just give you guys a couple of swatches so those are some of the colors that one is bye-bye look how metallic that is their metallic shades like this are so amazing and then the purple one is hello fabulous and then the pink is Outfit Repeater, which is from the movie. Lizzie McGuire, you are an Outfit Repeater. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the swatches of the palette. So pretty. I really, really enjoyed this one. And this one and the next one I'm going to talk about are probably my most used palettes. 
Um, I mean, of course, like my number one is probably my most used one out of all of these, but this was my most used palette out of all the other ones that I'm counting down. I used this a ton when I first got it because I thought it was just such a perfect spring palette. So that one is number six. Okay, you guys, so now I am going into the top five. These are the creme de la creme, my favorite palettes that I tried this year. It was so hard for me to rank these palettes this time because, again, there wasn't really... <gasps> A bad palette in the bunch excuse me except for what's worth the money and what's not but again like all these palettes have great formulas so it was really hard for me to rank these palettes this time like some of the rankings before this I knew which palettes were on the bottom and which palettes were on the top it's always like the middle palettes that I kind of struggle with but these were so much harder to rank so number five is the Kaleidos Club Nebula palette. Now, this one originally was ranked like two or three, but I kind of brought it down a little bit because not that there's nothing wrong. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the formula. It's impeccable. The formula is freaking amazing. Kaleidos is formula and the packaging, I mean, 10 million out of 10. This palette is so gorgeous. So this is the only collaboration palette that I picked up this past year. You know what's funny is that I ended up decluttering the Leora palette and the Bailey palette and I probably watch them more regularly than Angelica Nyquist. But out of all three of those palettes, this one is definitely the winner. The Estate palette that Bailey did was so dry, I just did not love it. And then the Ofra palette from Leora did not like their formula. This formula, holy crap, and I just fell in love with Angelica Nyquist's channel this year. But also, I was really wanting, like, a bigger palette from Kaleidos. I am thinking about selling the smaller one and just having this one in my collection from now on. I mean, the Cyber Bronze is so beautiful, but I honestly am thinking about that I'm not really going to use it too much anymore. I don't even get to use this one as much, I was, as much as I would like to. But after I tried out all the shades in here and tried the mattes, oh my god, so good the mattes in here so buttery so pigmented so beautiful to blend and the shimmers are stunning but the mattes in here are the star of the show they are so rich and pigmented and they blend beautifully and i was like i knew this was a match made in heaven like this collab made so much sense to me i'm like i would not see anyone else to be the first collaborator with with um Kaleidos than Angelica Nyquist because this is actually their first collab palette and I was like you guys like nailed it nailed it and these are so beautiful look how sparkly so the only reason why I ranked this a bit lower than what it was originally ranked originally ranked is because I have to think about which palettes appeal to me to use on an everyday basis I wanted to rank this so high just based on the formula not that I won't use this palette as much as I can but as far as like a palette that I'm going to reach for every single day or something I'm going to reach for often it's definitely not this one um so I'm just gonna um show you guys some swatches so we have Astro Void no Astro Queen of Blades and Seven of Nine Look at those mattes. Look how pretty that metallic is. I mean, give me give me a break. Like, they're literally gorgeous. Like, can you stop? I'm going to swatch a couple of more. Some of them are a bit PC when you swatch them because they're very metallic, so they can get a little bit PC. But look how pretty. Look how reflective those are. Like, are you? Shut up. Shut your damn mouth. Those are so beautiful. So that one is Firefly and that one is Nebula. Seriously, so freaking gorgeous. And then the matte red. Oh my god. Like, are you joking? Look how pretty that is. So pigmented, so buttery, absolutely gorgeous. If you haven't tried Kaleidos' formula, they are amazing. They glam light kaleidos and color pop and gimme glow holy crap they have my heart 
Kaleidos' formula is phenomenal. So I am so happy that I got this palette. I was so back and forth about it on whether or not I really wanted it. And then when I actually got it, I'm like, oh my God, this color story is actually freaking stunning. And I am just so happy about it. And I'm so happy to have it in my collection. And the packaging is just stunning. And the formula is just amazing. I love it so much. So that is number five. And now we're going to do number four. Originally, I had this one ranked just a tiny bit lower, but I just moved it up right now. So I was like, you know what? I have been loving this palette. And what's so crazy is that I, yeah, yeah just give me a minute. Okay, so the reason why I ranked this one a little bit higher, I mean, the formula is great in this. So freaking good. I love it. Um, but the formula in this one, I definitely love more. But as far as like reaching for it on a daily basis, um, what I need it for, um, what looks I'm going to create, it's a little bit harder for me to create looks with this palette. And I'm not going to be reaching for like a blue, red, and purple palette every single day, but it's amazing. So freaking good. So number four, and what's funny is that what I was saying before, my mom just needed to ask me a question, is that the palettes that I always say like I'm not going to get and end up getting, I end up falling in love with. And it's like so weird and it's always a ColourPop palette 99.9% .9 of the time. So number four is the ColourPop and Barbie Malibu Barbie palette. I didn't think I was going to love this palette so much, but I really, really do. This has been my absolute go-to summer palette right now. I don't know if it's just because it's a summer palette, but... I really love it. Um, and you know that people are always complaining about the color scheme of ColourPop and all that crap. But as far as like the bang for your buck for the collabs from ColourPop, these are definitely worth the money because they're a really, really nice formula. And you get 12 shades in this one. You get 15 shades in this one. I think this one's about 22. And I think the Lizzie McGuire was about the same. So I don't think that that's bad. When the Bambi palette was $14. So anyway, first off, the packaging is adorable. I love how small and compact this is. It's so easy to use and you can just take it with you everywhere. Like if you just need something to travel with. I think that this is a great option. It has a really adorable mirror. And then this is what the palette looks like. This is actually my first square pan palette from ColourPop. I love this palette so much. I love the colors in here. I think that they nailed this color story. I know, again, people are like, oh, it looks similar to this one or this one or this one. It's like, well, I don't have a color story like this from ColourPop. And I just think that this is a beautiful summer palette. The metallics in here are stunning and the mattes, the mattes are so damn good. Amazing. Um, they just blend beautifully. I love how there's these pinks in here, these blue colors. This orange goes so well with the blues. I just feel like they really gave, you know, like complementary colors to work with. You can do so many looks with this palette. You have you can do a pink look, you can do a warm tone look, you can do a blue look, you can do a more neutralish look, you can add, add a yellow and make it a little bit more warmer. Like I think there's so much it's such a fun palette for spring. I mean for spring, for summer that that's why I was like and, like, originally, I did not look at this palette, really, and then I watched, like, a few videos on it, and I saw it on ColourPop's profile on Instagram and everything, and I was like, why am I not getting this palette? And then I got it, and I was like, oh my god, I freaking love it. So, it's so good. The only reason why I was going to rank it a little bit lower is because some of the shimmers are a bit crumbly in the pan. Like, they do scrape up quite a bit, but once you put them on your lid, they are stunning. So, I was like, the formula is a bit crumbly and not as smooth as, like, the Lizzie McGuire palette formula or, like, some of the other round pans I was talking about. Um, but once they're on your eye, they are super beautiful. So, it's not like you get any of that fallout on your eyes. So, I was like... Why would I just rank it a little bit lower just because there's some scrape up in the pan? I was like, I can deal with that. So remember when I was telling you guys about the metallic 
lighter shades from ColourPop. This shade, Cali Girl, it is like the most blinding inner corner highlight I've used from ColourPop. It is so freaking metallic and beautiful. And then let me swatch the fun like metallic colors. Today's been such a, like, rainy day. It's been raining on and off, like, all day. So these are the other, like, colorful metallics. This one is Follow the Sun, and that one is Malibu Memories. These swatches aren't really doing them too much justice because on the lids, they are so beautiful. So I could rave about this palette for a while. I just, this has been my absolute favorite summer palette um, since the Extra Spicy palette from Give Me Glow. I love this palette. I think it's so pretty for spring. If you don't have these kind of colors, um, I think that this would be a great option for you. So let me just swatch a couple more of the colorful mattes. Just so you guys can get a feel for them. Just so good. And you can build these up to be even more pigmented. So that surfs up. I think that surfs up. Or is that Malibu Memories? Surfs up and Best Coast. The pink is best coat. So yeah, I love this palette so good. I think that this is one of their best collab palettes that they've come out with in a while. I mean, the Liz McGuire palette, of course, I love. But, you know, some of their palettes and releases have been really tired lately. And I just thought the Barbie palette, like, they always nail the collabs, I feel like. I wish sometimes they would come out with, like, one more product that, like, I felt like would make sense. Like, with this collection... I felt that the Barbie pink like blush would have made perfect sense. I don't know why they didn't come out with blushes with this collection. Because they had did like two pinks for the Lizzie McGuire collection. I was like why didn't they come out with like a peach shade and like a light nude shade for this. Or like a pink and a lighter peach shade. And then for this one they could have done the two Barbie pinks. I, that's what I would have swapped for those two collections. But it was still a solid collection. So that one is number four. Okay, the number three, I was going to rank this one even higher because I love it so much. But the only reason why I'm ranking the, this one a little bit lower is because it does leave staining behind, like, pretty majorly. But it's such an amazing palette formula-wise. So number three is the Glam Light Red Velvet Cupcake Palette. Now, you guys know... The Glam Light palettes always rank super high on my list, but gl again, Glam Light knows how to do eyeshadow. They are amazing at it, and I love, first off, the packaging is so freaking good for this palette because a lot of people were complaining about the bigger palettes from Glam Light that they're really hard to store, which I totally understand. I mean, their packaging is so much fun, and I love their food-themed theme packaging, but I'm kind of really happy that they're starting to go like this route. And I love how my square pan palettes ranked so much higher than my other palettes. But that's just how it worked out. But I love this palette so much, you guys. And I love how small and compact this is. Um, the only reason why I ranked it a bit lower is that I wish that, that there was more red in here. A lot of people like didn't love that there wasn't too much red in here. But this matte red is amazing and the red shimmer is gorgeous. And I think that these colors are beautiful. I rank this really high though because this is their best formula I've ever tried from Glam Light. This was the first palette that they released in 2021 because they took a break for a while. Because they were pumping out those releases for Christmas. And they grabbed me with the pie palette and with the donut palette. And I ended up buying the whole collection of the Christmas palette. I mean, of the pie palette because I loved that collection so much. But they kind of took a break from, and then this was the first palette that they released this year. And the, the colors are gorgeous. I really do love this color story. But I probably wouldn't have done this for like a red velvet color scheme. I kind of see this as just like a, a pink, like cupcake or like an ice cream themed color story um and I understand they put the pink pinks in here they're really fun but they put three purple shimmers in this palette and I'm just like it's a little bit much this is the palette I'm wearing on my eyes today but they are so blindingly beautiful so blindingly beautiful on the lids 
Um, and the mattes in here blend like a dream. They are amazing. So on my eyes today, I have confection in the crease. Then I darken up the crease more with Cupcake Heaven. And then I put super moist on the outer corners. And then I put dazzling all over the lid. And then I put cake mix on the inner corners. I don't know if my look is a little bit too dramatic for what I wore today. But I was like, you know what? I kind of want like a pinky purpley look today. Nobody's going to say anything. So I just felt to like, you know, to wear a little bit more glam makeup today. Maybe it was a little bit much just wearing a t-shirt. But hey, who cares? It, it wasn't really too bad. So... Let's just do some swatches for you guys. This matte red is like probably the most pigmented matte red I've ever seen before. It is like ridiculous. Look at that. Ridiculous. <sighs> kind of screwed up that swatch, but I think you'll get what I mean. Like, look at that. So that one is Decadent. And then, of course, the matte red is red velvet. And then the purple is dazzling, which is what I have on my lid. So, yeah, I have been using this palette a ton. Pretty much my favorite go-to palette right now besides the Malibu Barbie palette. They're both beautiful. And I just want to swatch this cream cheese shade because this one is freaking stunning as well. Oof. Like this shade from Glam Light and this shade from ColourPop have been my two favorite inner corner highlights like this whole year. So beautiful. So yeah, Glam Light just has my heart, but I do think that this is their best formula I've ever used from them. Better than the pie palette, better than the um, donut palette, better than the pizza palette. I felt that those palettes, I mean, they're amazing, but the mattes are a little bit drier in that palette. And the, the shimmers are a little bit less sparkly. These are gorgeous on the lid and they really do sparkle and I just love them. So, and these are so easy to use. So, love it. Can't say anything more about it. The only thing I would say is that some of the pink shades, they actually stain more than the red. The red does stain, but the pinks really do stain. So, just keep that in mind. So, okay. Number two. We're almost there. Number two is the, this is like one of the only new uh, brands to me that I had tried this year. And I don't know why I did not try this palette sooner, you guys, because obviously sooner you guys, if I could speak, but I just know I'm going to get a ton of use out of this palette still. Um, I don't know why I didn't try this brand earlier. I was like, this palette makes perfect sense to be in my collection. So I finally decided to get the Nabla side-by-side -side palette and it ended up being my number two palette this past year. This palette's amazing. Um, I was going to rank it a little bit lower actually because some of these finishes in here aren't like my preferred finish but at the same time the formula is so damn good and this has absolutely every essential neutral that I would ever need in my life. I would never need another neutral palette. The mattes in here are fantastic. Blend like a dream, super buttery. Love them so much. And the metallics in here are gorgeous. Like Love Ritual, um, Paradiso, and Cedarwood. Oh my god, and the mattes in here are phenomenal. You know what's funny is that the only shade that I haven't tried here in here yet is Untitled, but this black is amazing. I've used all the other shades though. I don't always love ranking palettes if I haven't tried every single shade, but I also haven't tried every single shade in the Gourmand Girls palette. I've tried almost every single one, but I know that I know my eyeshadow style and I know that I love this palette already. So um, some people make ranking videos and don't even try half the shades in the palette. They're just like, I love the color story. So <laughs> at least I've tested out these palettes pretty fully to tell you guys my thoughts. Metallics stunning like those three shades that I said the other shades have more of that sparkly formula but these two are beautiful especially um actually no not that one this one and yeah this one's beautiful these two are a little bit sheer for me because they have more of that pressed glitter like sheer kind of formula but they're so pretty so I love this palette I love the formula I can't believe I haven't tried glam light sooner because they're really pretty so Let's just watch some of the shades for you guys. Mm. 
All right, we're almost done. We only have one more palette left. Left. So those are some of the shades for you guys. So we have Paradiso. I can never tell the difference between these two. Halftime and Bonjour. Super smooth, super metallic. Love those. And then let's just watch a couple. Let's just swatch a couple of more if I could speak. <laughs> um, and then we have Cedarwood and Tempera. Let's just swatch some of those. But they're so buttery smooth. That one is Cedarwood and that one is Tempera. Just an absolutely essential neutral palette for anyone that's trying to look for something that's, you know, sometimes neutral palettes don't have every single shade that you need in it. But I really feel like this one is like a one-stop shop palette. I can use this palette and never use a different palette to need like the neutral colors that I would need to create a look. I have everything in here. So that's why I thought this palette was so damn good. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful. You have a matte brow bone highlight. You have a black. You have a gray. You have a, some cooler tones in here. You have these beautiful warmer eyeshadows. And you have all these beautiful metallics. These shimmer shades work beautifully as lid toppers, even though I don't love them on their own. They're beautiful as lip lid toppers. Oh, and Ray of Light. Oh my god, I love this shade too. You guys know I'm a sucker for these types of shades on my inner corners. And that one is right here. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. So that one is number two. I can't rave about this palette enough. It's amazing. Why am I why am I such a mess right now? So yeah, that one is my number two pick this year. I just knew that I fell in love with it after the first time I used it. And I love the formula. So if you guys have been wanting to try Nabla, you're missing out if you haven't tried it yet. But I understand. I understand there's a lot of formulas to try out there. I get it. Their formula is so good. Okay, and then number one. Can you guys guess what it is? I'll wait. See if you guys can guess. Number one. And you guys, of course... I don't think I had a ColourPop palette ranked number one. That's a hint, by the way. Since the So Jaded palette. So number one is the ColourPop Ornate palette. You guys. You guys. This formula is amazing. This is probably the best formula ColourPop had ever come out with. And this palette got so overlooked from people in this collection. They just didn't give it enough of a moment, but this collection and the, sh this collection, can I speak? This collection and the eyeshadow palettes in it and everything in it, beautiful, but the eyeshadow palettes in this collection were the star of the show. Holy crap. And plus the packaging, I mean the packaging, oh my god, so beautiful. And then this is what the palette looks like. I think besides the Going Coconuts palette, this is like the best um, uh, color scheme that they've ever done. Um, for me, this fits my needs because it has warm tones in it. But the mattes in here are so freaking rich and beautiful and blend out beautifully. And the metallics in here are stunning. Oh my god, so good. Like, would you think that a 9-pan palette would beat out all of these palettes that have more shades in them? Yes. Amazing. And I just think that this um, collection should have had more of a moment. But they are beautiful. So let me just do a couple swatches. I think dinner's ready, so I have to be really quick about this. Um, but those are some of the shades. So we have Siren. Gilded and Bohem. These aren't really doing them justice because they are so freaking gorgeous on the lid and on in the crease. So beautiful. And then I'll just swatch some of the like um of the deeper mattes. Oh my god, so pretty. So that one is Charisma and Rival. I knew as soon as I used these on my eyes I was like holy crap like this formula from ColourPop is on a whole nother level um 
and it's just amazing. I love how there's like really no pressed glitters in here. You can create so many looks with this one little palette. You can do like a warm tone look with these. You have these deeper rich mattes to really deepen up a look and make it super vampy and sexy. You have this really beautiful metallic that you guys know I love these kind of shades. You have this mustardy yellow. You have these orangey shades and you have a black in here. Amazing. Can't say anything else about this palette. It's phenomenal. Love the quality. So damn good. So yeah, that's it, you guys. Those are my um, 12 palettes that I tried this year all ranked for you guys all my full thoughts on everything i hope you guys enjoyed this video please leave in the comments below what your favorite palette was this past year if you guys were even buying makeup this year let me know i'm a nosy bitch and i need to know so i love you guys please like and subscribe follow me on my instagram at cbw819 and check out my poshmark at the same handle which is cbw819 i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching bye